Hi, uh, my name is Ryan White. I'm the author of CUDAPAD, and I want to give a quick video demonstration of how CUDAPAD works and um, maybe a little bit of history and uh, some other items. So uh, here we go. Um, so I made a little um, menu here on the, the right that I'll be covering. Um, first off, what is CUDAPAD? Uh, CUDAPAD is a program um, that I created um, in 2009 um, to uh, make life easier for myself, actually. Um, I was taking um, uh, CUDA kernels and stuffing them in a, a notepad and uh, running nvcc.exe on them and then saving um, and then looking at the output files. So most notably the PTX file, and then just look at peeking into there. Um, so I do this process over and over and over, and I slowly got a little quicker at it. So it was only like probably about 15 seconds. Um, I think I might have developed a bat file real quick to help with that, but I can't remember. Uh, but then I was like, oh, it'd be a great idea to uh, dump all this into, uh, you know, a quick C sharp app. You know, throw the kernel on the left window and throw the ASM on the right window uh, and uh, or the PTX I should say and uh, so then I did that part that part actually probably only took about a day or less um, real quick to, to create that um, then the next week or two I spent getting carried away anyway so um, on with the quick demo. Um, uh, first off, how does CUDAPAD work? Um, CUDAPAD basically takes everything in this window here and then compiles it into a bat file. Sorry, uh, it takes all of this here, saves it to a file, and then in a bat file that runs in the background, it compiles that in compiles it with nvcc.exe um, with some uh, command line options, um, some uh, compiler options, and then it outputs the, and then it runs, and then it saves the file to a PTX file, and then this program picks that up, grabs it, and posts it over here. So that's um, kind of the gist on, on how it works. Um, uh, when this NVCC does compile, it does output a couple other files. Uh, uh, one is the um, um, errors, and then one is um, some specs on the kernel as well. Um, so let's jump on to the second point here, uh, CUDA PTX viewer, and I guess I mentioned that already. Um, so um, you put your C++ CUDA kernels on this side, and then a few moments later, they will pop up on the right here. So um, it will automatically um, recompile. Um, so you can also view other things. You could do SAS, which is the assembly. Um, there isn't much um, cool stuff here with the assembly. It does clean it up a little bit, but uh, um, there's no like highlighting or anything like that though. Um, no lines connecting the two windows either. Uh, but this is the raw assembly, the actual code that gets um, generated for the um, GPU. Um, whereas the PTX is an intermediate language, but it's still really close to, um, to, to SAS, I would say. Um, usually it's a one to one or one to two, at least it used to be, you know, conversion. Um, but PTX is more of an intermediate language. Um, so um, that's my next bullet point over here. Um, so there is highlighting. So um, to make things more readable, um, added a little bit of uh, text highlighting. Um, to both windows here. So you have the PTX, it highlights different words, um, excuse me, and uh, you know, 
on this site as well. This it makes things a little quicker to read. Uh, auto complete compile. I'm sorry. Actually, it does have auto. Ugh, I can't remember. Oh, that's a different program. <laughs> um, but it does have auto compile. Um, so whenever something is changed over here in the right window, I'm going to change that minus to a plus there. Um, we will see over here on the right that there's a change. And so it added this add here and then deleted this subtract. Um, so that's kind of the main thing with CUDAPAD is just what you saw. You make a small change and you look at the, the results on the right side window. And the whole reason, um, don't jump off subject here, but the whole reason to look at the PTX is um, you might have a bug or something in your program and you're trying to figure out what, where is this value coming from or how come you're not getting the correct value. And, and you can actually see almost what the GPU is doing in here. So you, so you can sometimes find um, uh, issues with bugs. Um, you can also optimize code. Um, so sometimes just rewriting the same function in a different way will result in different um, PTX code and often more, or sometimes more efficient code. Um, I've run into that over and over again. Um, another thing is, um, oh, just for fun. Um, that's actually probably why I've been in pad the most is just playing around. I was like, oh, what if we change this? What if we change this? It kind of helps you have a feeling of how the compiler works and, and just how efficient your code is in general. So if you write some you know, really uh, good code, or, well, if you write some code and then you immediately see on the right side how much PTX it generates, you can kind of get a feeling on how efficient it is. Just because there's more PTX, by the way, it's slower. Um, it could just be unwrapping something, unrolling something as well. But, but I think it kind of teaches a little bit on um, how to become a efficient programmer. So um, anyway, um, jumping off, I was jumping off topic there. Um, let's see, visual code lines. Um, as you probably already saw already, there are these uh, code lines that connect the left window to the right window. Um, this makes life a lot easier because you know this add statement is coming off of this line. So it's probably add one. That's probably that add one right there. So without that, I mean, if you look at it without that code lines, I mean, it's like, what? what's going where? You know, it's really confusing. But you put those in and it just makes life a lot easier. Um, this was something I thought I, kind of came up with in 2009. Um, but I did some uh, uh, research, uh, just some looking online after that. It looks like somebody else had another I similar idea for a diff viewer in 2006 or something. So I guess I wasn't the first one to come up with that. Anyway, um, let's move on to the next thing, the compile time. That shows right down here. Every time there is a change, um, it will show you how long it took to compile. I've noticed over the years that it's actually, it's taken a little longer to compile in 2009, 10. It was actually probably, I'm just guessing here, but it was 2000 milliseconds. I don't know. It used to be a lot quicker, but I think that's, more because um, there is more um, thinking going on in the compiler and trying to optimize your code to make it faster and smaller. So um, that that extra time you're getting is is probably sure paying for itself. Um, but anyway, um, compiler. Um, let's see, visual code lines, quick online search. Another thing that. Uh, I'm not sure, but I thought it was kind of a good idea was, I was like, oh, you know, I keep, you know, Googling these, um, or searching online for these terms here, or for these um, error messages. Why don't I just add it in here? So I did this, and so I did uh, Google this, 
And basically, when you whenever you do that, it will just open up Google and um, with this command, but it will or with this um, message here in in the search window, but it will also append the word CUDA so that it it it's in that um, context. Um, uh, let's see. So yeah, something. I actually saw another um, thing like a couple years later that had something like that too. So um yeah um let's see some compiler time air window yeah so anyway that's this air window you have some errors in your program this this one is here on purpose because i like to make sure it's working but you could just type something in there if there's an error it will tell you and you can click on it and it will bring you to the correct line um let's see compiler time Air window that info window okay so this just tells you some specs um sometimes it doesn't grab all the data though but it just tells you the specs of like uh, how many registers you use and that's pretty much the one you use the most the lower the better um generally um so at the peak usage here it shows eight registers um but yeah this this data here is collected when we run nvcc so i'll show you that in a in a couple minutes um let's see the ptx sas menu I already showed you that that's up here you can look at two different menus um turning on and off features um so as you probably saw me doing already you could you know turn off these um these lines that go back and forth you could turn off the regex so I'm sorry, the um, the diff information. Um, and you could also uh, turn off the autocompile. So um, there's a, oh, that, that comment's incorrect. That should, that's actually for this one. Oops, anyway. Um, so if you turn the autocompile off, you'll have to click here to autocompile. And that's actually a very useful feature because sometimes you might be typing stuff in over here and you might want to, so normally whenever you make a change, right? Change that to a negative, bang, it auto recompiles and then it shows the diff information. But sometimes you might want to make a couple changes. You might want to change this to a minus and then, um, you know, this doesn't really make sense, but you know, you might want to make a couple changes at once and then, and then compare. You know, and then see what happens. I think I, I'm not going to show any changes. Oh, because I have the diff off. But anyway, so if you have the, the difference on, you can make several changes at once and then just click here, click on the start to refresh it. So, and, and then you can look in there. So let me turn all those back on. We're almost to the end here. So open temp folder. Um, so, so oh, look, let me go through the... Uh, um, menus here. Um, nothing interesting in there. These, this does have like little defined stuff, uh, stuff like that. I didn't actually do the text highlighting or the the, the search functions. It's a um, this is kind of a component I got off a Code Project. It's pretty nice. You can look at my Code Project article to find out uh, which one I used. Uh, but um, let's see compiler options. So. Uh, one thing fun with CUDAPAD is you, whenever like a new version comes out, well, it has to be built into the CUDAPAD though, but whenever there's a new architecture and it's you know in here, what I like to do is just compare it. What changed? So if I look at this code here and I look at it with the 5.2, um, you could look at you know how the code changed. Actually, usually it's not very much. Um, there's often not too much change. Um, but over enough time, if we go to like 2.0, so we're comparing 2.0 to 5.3 now, um, we will see some changes. So these can be ignored because um, these labels, these are just the labels names change. So it looks like it, it changed, but it really didn't. So with this code here, 
I don't actually see any differences between compiling it with the uh, 2.0 architecture versus the 5.2. Actually, it's, yeah, for some reason, the uh, the the one doesn't seem to compile for some reason. I'm not sure why. But I mean, anyway, so let me go back to the Five. Sorry, I just dropped my uh, little microphone here. Yeah, yeah. There, woke me up. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, so yeah. So, so what's cool is you can go in here and you can, you know, we want to say we want to look at this under sixty-four bit. So, um. We can see what changes if we compile with NVCC with 64-bit, and then so you notice there's a lot of changes in there. Like it's using you know S64 functions instead, um, so that's that's pretty useful. And there's you use fast math, see what changes when you if you use fast math. Do that real quick. Yep. Yeah. So see how it uses the FTZ. I think that's float to zero probably. But yeah, it, it changes some things there. Um, so let's see, um, the temp folder. Um, so uh, going back to the kind of the way CUDA pad works is uh, when CUDA pad starts up, let me open that temp folder. So when you click that shortcut, it will bring you to this folder here. Um, so when CUDA pad starts up, it builds this bat file. Um, it also builds it, rebuilds it if any of the menu items are changed other than the compiler options because it obviously needs to rebuild the NVCC line right here. So at the be um, so what every time a code every time there's a change in the code, there is some um, uh, it basically runs this and. Um, you could look at it, but it's, it pretty makes a lot of sense. Um, it sets the variables. Um, it sets. Um, it deletes the the previous uh, data dot kubin file, um, and then it runs the nvcc with all the command line options. Well, um, with the ones that are um, specified by the um, compiler uh, menu, whatever is checked in there is how this will work. Um, that little window where you type your CUDA code is actually saved into a file immediately before this is run into this file, data.cu. And then when that gets um, compiled, um, that gets um, saved to, I think, um, uh, actually, well, it's down here. It gets saved to, after you run that command, it gets saved to data.ptx. Um, so another item is, is when you run NVCC, it collects the output of that into info.txt. And up here, um, yeah, again, info.txt. So if we look at info.txt, it's basically you know, the, the command line output whenever you run those. And this is where CUDAPAD grabs like how many the register usage. Oh, see, it went up two registers with a 64-bit compiler. But anyway. Uh, but that's kind of the fun part. Oh, look, it uses more registers when you use 64-bit. So it's, it's kind of fun to play with. Um, so, so these are the output files. So every time you run NVCC compile with these options, it, it'll, it'll give you a SAS file. And when you change it to the SAS menu, all it's doing is it's showing you this one here. Um, this one, I forgot what that's for. Um, and then there's info.txt, which I just covered. And these are all other things part of the build process. Actually, here's the data.cu file. Oh, well, the, this viewer doesn't show it, but it's basically just that, um, the kernel that we put in the left window. But anyway, so that's it here. So let me jump back to the CUDA pad thing. All right, I think that's about it. Uh, hopefully I covered everything. Uh, one note is on the, um, <clears throat> the reg X. Um, I'm sorry, the, the diff is, when, when I do the diffs, by the way, I strip out all the uh, register numbers. Um, the reason I strip them out is because um, register numbers are, are changing often. And 
you would see almost you make a small change and you'd see almost every line changed so so the whatever the, that's run it's stripping it out so actually you can kind of see it here so you see that it was stripped out it replaced the um, the three with two underscores so so that's basically what it's doing it looks like it actually does constants too so it does that as well so i think that's about it um i think i covered it all hopefully thank you very much for watching this video and i hope you made it to the end uh have a good uh good one thanks bye bye